Okay, so um, I think I'm, I mentioned uh, the idea uh, back when we at the Kubernetes policy uh, working group meeting. Um, so it happened that uh, David, I, and a couple of folks from Google and Facebook uh, were now working on a, well, it's in a stealth mode at the moment, but we're working on a new, uh, like, uh, open source uh, initiative to define a uh, machine learning pipeline metadata standard basically um so as you can see this is for now a private repo uh, i think david could uh, add you guys later um the current plan is to have a decision you know whether to uh move this to open i think by april 15th and uh, probably a a, a public announcement uh, around the KubeCon uh, time period. Okay, so um, the pain point or uh, the motivation uh, why we are doing this is actually uh, quite straightforward. Uh, so uh, from our perspective, uh, we have customers uh, you know, come to Huawei Cloud uh, for the uh, AI service with their model. Um, so a uh, customer just uh, hope uh, that they can use uh, the AI service uh, to train, uh, to start, you know, uh, uh, train or uh, do uh, inference with their current model uh, at hand. Uh, but the problem is, it's just really difficult uh, to recreate uh, the whole build environment uh, for a just given model. You know, uh, a lot of information is missing. Uh, I think the versioning alone uh, just a major headache uh, for us. Um, so for uh, from our perspective, it would be really nice uh, to have a like industry-wide standard uh, on metadata so that everybody know how to tag their model and also provide like a manifest of, you know, how, uh, how the authors like build the model actually uh, like, like using what framework, using what uh, pipeline, et cetera. Um, can you guys still hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, so one, yeah, uh, go ahead and continue. Okay. So, uh, well, the like motivation from uh, Microsoft is that uh, we have this like crazy pace of uh, artificial intelligence uh, development and study in the act uh, academic field, right? And models, papers coming out, you know, faster than uh, Docker images. Uh, so for Azure, uh, what they find difficult is also like similar problem that if they had found like a model from uh, a certain paper, um, they can now just recreate uh, an environment to either like retrain that model or you know tune that model. Uh, there's just so much information loss uh, uh, missing uh, for that model. Um, I believe there are like similar uh, motivations from Facebook, Google, uh, those participants. Uh, so that's basically what drives us uh, collaborating now together uh, to try to define this uh, well, what we usually call the, the pipeline uh, metadata standard. So as you can see, um, this is some just 
literature survey of existing um, pipelines, uh, we basically use uh, Qflow as like uh, baseline uh, for uh, for the pipeline. Like part of the uh, part of the reason is like uh, David was among the people actually create uh, Qflow. And uh, we also like part of the Qflow community, and uh, Qflow is uh, pretty powerful. So uh, it's it's um, uh, a good de facto baseline uh, for us. So the proposed standard, I think I can just go straight ahead. Yeah, something like this. Um, it's still in in a uh, very early stage. Uh, I think you could imagine a like a, a big YAML or uh, that, that kind of file uh, with fields that uh, like define data. Um, for example, uh, the the training data set metadata uh, is also uh, like critical for the whole pipeline. Uh, because for PyTorch or uh, if you have TensorFlow uh, 2.0, so for those like dynamic graph, um, uh, the output varies uh, like hugely when the input uh, differences. Uh, so the versioning for the data set uh, is very cr uh, like critical. Uh, for the recreation of the whole pipeline. And uh, also you would need metadata information to define the pipeline itself. Also experiment. Um, this uh, actually, um, like I, I, I heard an episode from folks from LinkedIn. Uh, I think many company uh, actually is running an experiment based uh, uh, AI development. So they have experiment ID, uh, identify like, uh, uh, like we, uh, which one uh, pro, uh, produces uh, this version of the model so that they can backtracking and you know do either roll back or roll out in a like uh, similar in the traditional software engineering. And you have the model packaging, of course, you have logging, uh, monitoring, and the metadata to describe the metadata itself, of course. Um, yeah, so basically this is the idea. Uh, uh, because it's still in early stage, so I think I can just click through. Uh, model packaging. Uh, we will define like key requirements for like metadata to describe uh, the model packaging. Okay. There's a sample YAML file. Um, runtime artifact framework, you know, time created, created by whom, purpose, you know, a, a, a rich set of information, just describe uh, the model. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, the idea is, I think, uh, very straightforward. Uh, one of the reason I mentioned this to David is that uh, after uh, Justin's talk uh, on uh, Kubernetes policy working group, uh, I was thinking like what uh, what in total uh, provides. So uh, we we say like supply chain, but basically it's very similar uh, to the pipeline. I think. Uh, we, we, we try to define for machine learning because in the real world, um, 
uh, in the whole like life cycle of the pipeline, it w wouldn't be like necessary. These uh, the whole pipeline happens in one place, right? You could have somebody train the model, and uh, could you could have somebody else set up the the the, the training pipeline, or somebody uh, another like cloud provider uh, provide you the serving platform. Uh, the data set could come from again another one so i think this situation would like the bags uh, solutions like in total uh to like uh, help uh, to to enhance basically the security of the like the entire machine learning pipeline um so uh my question is uh, what do you guys think that we could better utilize like uh shall we use in total as like tooling or we can directly uh incorporate like something from the in total or top framework uh, into the metadata standard itself um So what do you guys think? Sorry, we thought we weren't muted. Uh, Paul. Hey, so uh, I was thinking that uh, it's definitely possible to use in photo to basically authenticate and uh, link every every data provider and every data processor within the pipeline. Uh, uh, I uh, uh, in total is very agnostic. So in terms of the fields that you showed us, uh, it really doesn't care if it's a uh, if it's a machine learning model or is it or if it's a data set or if it's a git repository or what it is really so from my like my my like quick uh, idea to make this work i think it's a uh, i think you guys can uh, uh, basically enrich the total schema in the same way that we're doing with Graphius and uh, other uh, and other integrations in the in that you basically the, the base uh, the base uh, properties that you really want is uh, mm -hmm. to be able to connect things, uh, agents with each other uh, and provide integrity of the data that's provided and consumed um, and uh, to be able to have them authenticate what they are providing. So basically uh, say, hey, uh, this, is the, this is the product that I have uh, and uh, I am signing it with my private key so that you know, uh, so that, you know that this is our, uh, this is what I am providing. And uh, on top of that, all of the other information that's relevant to uh, relevant to machine learning specifics then can be added as part of like environment information. Uh, I don't know if this makes sense to you. Uh, you mean <laughs> like, uh, can you give like example, like how Graphias uh, like incorporate in total or? So for example, Graphias has uh, schemas that represent CD vulnerability scans. Mm -hmm. But uh, those are very rich, uh, very like descriptive uh, schemas about CD vulnerability scans that uh, that Intoto doesn't really care about. What Intoto cares about is that you actually scan, like the thing that you scanned is the right thing that should have been scanned. Okay. Uh, so Intoto has the space for you to like enrich uh, Intoto link metadata, which is this like signed attestation of what you did. Uh, but you need to fill in what artifacts did you uh, operate on, and that's what's really like uh, fundamental for uh, supply chain security and policy checking. Does this make any sense to you? Um, so uh, back to the uh, metadata example. So. Um, uh, like anywhere you would suggest that we can like, for example, adding some of the in total 
uh, standard uh, in or we can just yeah. use in total as a tool so, so think about uh, so imagine you wanted to emit uh, this metadata mm -hmm. you could emit it in JSON format you could emit it in XML you could emit it in all kinds of different formats like that right yeah okay and the stand the way in which you emit it isn't really relevant to what you're saying so in Toto also happens sort of in a way that isn't exactly relevant to what you're saying. It happens sort of after it, kind of like your decision about whether when you build these data structures, if you emit them in JSON or XML, that happens later. If you emit them within Toto, they end up signed and get validated and everything else. But it's it's not, um, like the fact it's XML doesn't, or JSON doesn't restrict you from saying any of these things. The fact you're doing it within Toto doesn't restrict any of this, it just wraps it. It's just a way of like wrapping it and helping you emit it in, in the way you want. Okay. That, way. Yeah. So, so uh, that means basically we can use uh, in total as a security tool, right? Like afterwards. Yeah, basically, you know, if you decide you're going to emit stuff in format X or format Y, whatever, that's fine. In mm -hmm. total, sort of wrap that and and then provide you with that meaningful security guarantee, right? And if you want to do things like wrap actual commands, wrap actual things to do, Intoto does that as well. So you can literally run binaries or other things and Intoto will do stuff like help you figure out what files were used with it and what its output was and, um, you know, take secure hashes of the things that were used with that and so on as part of figuring, making it, effectively be reproducible is almost what it is. Okay, so uh, another question is like, uh, shall we use in total like in uh, each step of the pipeline or like it could be just trigger once and it will be run for each component? Uh, it should be run for each component. Uh, what I was thinking is uh, if, if you want to like think of steps forward is uh, if you have a demo of uh, this machine learning pipeline, then we can probably make a really quick uh, rundown on how to use Intoto with it. Uh, and we probably think about how to, uh, like, it will make it easier for you to, like, reason about yeah. uh, how it's working and how is it securing your pipeline. Yeah, we happen to just made a quick POC. Um, I think I can show you the idea, so I don't know if it is live now. Um, okay. So the idea is basically you can upload uh, the model file with the metadata together, right? And you choose like the type of the hardware and you submit. And uh, after you submit, actually there's a, like a CICD kind of pipeline, a spin up. So there will be like virtual machine created and uh, like Qflow Kubernetes deployed. And then you can, um, a lot of jobs. I don't know which one. Uh, By the way, I'm going to have to leave in like two or three minutes, but the two of you could continue this if Santiago can join a, a Zoom link. Okay, cool. I have another meeting, unfortunately. So I, I think we can probably, uh, if you can point us to this repository, we can probably cut it here and I can uh, I can take a look and probably like make a really quick integration of Intoto into this. So we can start bouncing and probably meet uh, sometime next week with a, like a updated context of everything. Oh, uh, yeah, that'd be nice. So, um, but one other, yeah, one other thing before, because we're going to have to run, um, I'm going to have to run, is uh, I noticed, I think you tried to sign up on the Uptain forum. Uh, yeah. Um, I think it might 
not be that relevant to do because it's mostly automakers, it's low volume. Um, is there a reason why you want to join like the standards effort there or anything? I think in total is really what we're looking for. Yeah, yeah. that's another <laughs> area I was looking at. So we, we are actually uh, 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 developing a uh, self-driving like uh we call that a uh, mobile data center so so it's uh, like over the air for cars or what is it for yeah like a tiny uh, pc box you can install uh, in the car okay all right i yeah. just wanted to understand that i'll i'll authorize those okay uh, let's then follow up with an email and uh and uh, i think i can uh, i can help you ground everything uh, related to this uh, machine learning uh, pipeline. Okay, cool. Okay, awesome. Okay, thank you guys. All right, talk to yeah. you later, bye. Yeah, talk to you later, bye-bye.